The Tondo slum in Manila, where some of the poorest Filipinos work and live in a giant charcoal factory, constantly breathing toxic fumes. An all too common existence in a country where about 30% of the population lives below the poverty line, according to the government. For many Filipinos, the only way to escape hardship like this is to find work abroad. Millions have migrated to the economic powerhouses along the new Silk Road, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and the UAE. George Soriaga works as a procurement officer at a media company in Abu Dhabi. He moved to the Middle East 20 years ago. It's, it's not a plan, you know. Uh, me and my friends just went to one of the agency and tried to apply uh, work to, to work abroad. Then uh, successfully uh, we, we got, we got uh, listed in, in the job and then that was the start of my uh, career <laughs> in the work abroad. Soriaga is only one of many Filipinos who have come to this region to work on construction sites or do other jobs in vastly expanding Silk Road economies like Dubai or Abu Dhabi. Most Filipinos send large amounts of cash back home, so-called remittances, to help their loved ones get by. There are between 400,000 and 600,000 Filipino workers in the United Arab Emirates, and every year they send home billions of dollars. The Philippines government is now trying to educate this massive migrant workforce to make sure the money workers send home is used to build a sustainable future for themselves and to develop the country. The government in Manila estimates that Filipinos sent home more than $20 billion last year alone a huge economic factor for the country. And now the Philippines Embassy in Abu Dhabi has started a program to educate migrant workers how to use the cash they make abroad wisely. There's a lot of money that if we can um, help guide our overseas Filipinos and their families where to invest, I think that will be a large source of uh, what we call our president says public-private sector cooperation. So the public is government, the private is them. We work together to invest. Courses involve financial literacy training, where participants learn how to invest money effectively, but also how to stop relatives back home from spending all the cash on consumer goods. Maria Rosario de la Cruz is a nurse. She's been working abroad for 27 years and says being separated from the family is hard enough, but bad finances can make that hardship even worse. It would cause family, family problems communication gaps between husband and wife and children. It could destroy a family just because of a financial problem. You see, but if a family is financially stable, I don't think there would be a problem within the family. With this training, the Philippines government hopes its migrant workers, who sacrificed so much helping to build the new Silk Road power centers like Dubai, can also help develop their own country's economy after they return. Prudencio Garcia is a prime example of how it can work. Garcia went to Saudi Arabia in the early 1990s as an accountant. He returned to the Philippines more than a decade later and used his savings to expand the family's business, the McKenney Foods Company, which now has more than a thousand employees. For us to start doing a business, we have to go out of the country, wherein we can save more to uh, someday that we can start our own business. Prudencio Garcia used his time working in one of the new Silk Road economies to build his future. And the Philippines government hopes others will follow suit so that sometime in the future, places like the Tondo slum will be nothing more than a dark spot in this country's history. Fred Plekin, CNN, Abu Dhabi.